Hello. Hello there. <laughs> How are you? Great. Thanks. How are you? Good. Very good. Um, without further ado, let's let's get started here. It's the top of the hour. It is a beautiful, almost uh, soon to be very snowy uh, Wednesday afternoon here in Omaha. Yep. You see your winter coat there. Um, <laughs> Just to put a timestamp on this, it is February 22nd, uh, 2023. We're starting off uh, the new year right. Excited to talk to Emily here in a bit, uh, but let's do some housekeeping items first uh, so our listeners can participate in our conversation here. So for those of you that are listening live, you can uh, click the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to type a question. And I highly encourage audience participation. It really just helps these conversations um, flow. Um, I want to make sure that you get the information that you're looking for. So if any question comes up while Emily and I are visiting, um, certainly ask the question. I'll make sure that it gets asked over the course of the next 30 minutes. My name is Jen Cheney. I'm the Vice President of Franchise Development. Emily, can you introduce yourself to our listeners, please? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emily Undejohn, Vice President of Strategic Operations, really focusing in on our franchisee experience. Okay. Awesome. All right. So um, looking at the topic for today's webinar, it's supporting franchisee success. Um, and I really want to talk about it and really focus on from the time their business is open and operating and beyond. OK, so we have done uh, separate webinars. So those of you that are listening, you can look in the Resource Center. We do have webinars um, that we have done talking about the support that we give to people before their doors open for business. So what we're gonna talk about today is really the support after the fact. And for the entire duration of you as a franchise owner, okay? So let's start at the very beginning, Emily. Um, can you just paint a general picture of, uh, okay, a franchise owner just opened their business. Um, so pretend I'm a franchise owner, today is my first day. Really what happens to get the business open per se? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And just like the very beginning support that, that you and your team provide? Yeah, great question, Jen. So once we welcome you into the Ride at Home family, uh, we launch a project plan. And so we have a dedicated project manager that's going to walk you through set milestones to help you open your office within, um, again, everyone's a little bit different, but in that 30, 60, 90 day of milestones, we're going to get your office operational. We're going to help you and I guide you to who to hire, when to hire, what roles to focus on. Uh, so really this project plan drives not only accountability for us internally and weekly uh, things that need to be checked off so that we're on track for your opening. It also gives you an opportunity to know what's in the wings and, and each week uh, giving you to-dos uh, so that we stay on track. Uh, but that's kind of the front end of the funnel is really this project onboarding schedule. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about the team that's in place that that supports our franchisees with this? Yes. So we have uh, two dedicated project managers. Uh, both do have franchising experience. Uh, one actually used to run a home care business. Uh, and so her experience is, is just uh, priceless in this onboarding. Uh, and that team is overseen by our director of operational excellence. Um, and again, they're experts in project management. They're going to bring in subject matter experts that are specific to each milestone. So you'll be able to meet our employee experience team and talk about caregiver recruitment and retention. You'll be able to meet our healthcare regulatory team uh, to help get the appropriate licensing and walk you hand in hand through that process. Um, but again, your go-to person, the first about six months of your journey with Right at Home is going to be the project management team. Okay. So um, let's see here. So um, once your doors are open for business, you're starting to get clients. What's really kind of the, the foundation of a franchise owner who has just started? Is there some type of a, um, a project plan or specific timeline? Okay. So here we are. Today is your first day. This is what the first six months looks like, 12 months mm -hmm. looks like. You know, what is their um, operational goal or plan that's put in place? What Describe that and what that looks like. Yeah, so that is uh, part of our Right Start onboarding plan. Uh, we do utilize a smart sheet. And so it's very similar to an Excel spreadsheet where it's mapped out by milestone. And it's already going to put in there your projected open date should you meet the milestones as they're outlined. 
And then if we get a little off course, we can help you get right back on, but it's gonna each week tell you, okay, here's the countdown to that grand opening. Um, and again, it's a partnership. We're here to walk you through each and every opportunity, um, helping you get signage, uh, helping you set up your office, getting um, the right furniture, uh, and even just selecting the office space, you know, where best should you be um, looking at leasing an opportunity or buying a building um, so that you can have that uh, ready to go for your grand opening. But it's an onboarding project plan with about 10 set milestones. And under each milestone is weekly accountability check-ins, coaching, uh, training opportunities, and then follow-up. That's awesome. And you just answered a question that came in almost exactly. So the question actually says, do you help me decide um, if I need to set up my office, i.e. signage, office equipment, do you, do you help with that? And so that's quite almost literally exactly what you just <laughs> said is, yes, we do help with that. Um, okay. And then the next question is, uh, is an office a complicated process? So I'm assuming if, if, if you want to clarify your question, selecting an office or finding an office location, if you can kind of describe what that process looks like. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's very complicated. We are, um, we've kind of got a one pager that really walks you through, here's everything you should be thinking about as you're going to source your office space. And a lot of that comes from just being a franchise system, but also opening our own locations throughout the United States and wanting not only to have the best place uh, geographically within your market space, but also thinking about the digital web and how uh, from a Google perspective you could be found and and what is the SEO strategy uh, as it comes to. So I wouldn't say it's complicated. We've got um, great resources you can reference um, and years of experience that, again, we want you to, to learn from what we've uh, gleaned from opening our own and, and take into that consideration. Uh, so I would say pretty straightforward process. Okay. Perfect. And uh, another question came in. Um, and thank you for that, Emily, by the way. Uh, this question is, um, uh, I love this question, by the way. If someone purchases territories from an existing owner, is the level of support still there? So just to clarify for the rest of the listeners here, what Emily is describing is somebody coming in, purchasing a brand new territory starting from scratch and the level of support that we provide. This listener is asking, well, we do have some resale opportunities. So existing mm -hmm. franchise owners that are selling their business and potential buyers for that. So if somebody comes in and they're purchasing a resale, what does that support look like? Emily, and I'll let you answer that. Yes, this, as you mentioned, Jen, the support does look a little bit different. So in a resale, you're actually going to work directly with the business performance coach. And I hadn't had an opportunity to talk about that role uh, just quite yet. So once the onboarding plan is launched on a brand new franchisee coming into our uh, system, they then, after about six months and they've met their milestone, get transitioned to a business performance coach. That coach is their go-to for all questions, helping scale operations, um, building your peer-to-peer -peer community within the system. For the resale, you're going to go directly to support from your business performance coach. Again, they'll have all the knowledge of that prior owner, the prior team that they can help. Um, we always talk about you're on the semi flying down the highway and we're changing out the driver. We want that still to be on cruise control and the least disruptive as possible. Uh, so your business performance coach would be your day-to-day uh, -day support contact as you're going through the resale. Okay, got it. And this question, this next question I'm going to ask, I'm going to uh, offer my, my two cents first and then um, you can certainly reply as well. This question is, do you help me establish my office space budget? Uh, I do encourage you to look at item seven in the FDD where we have a breakdown of, of startup costs um, and it's, it's categorized and you can look at, um, you know, general startup costs and there's, there's, there's a bucket for that. So certainly we provide generally how much money people spend as they, you know, on uh, certain things, office supplies and, and things like that. So take a look at item seven. You can certainly discuss that with your development director um, when you're doing the FDD review. But Emily, anything that you want to provide in addition to that when it comes to, okay, I found my office space. Now, what should it look like? And you know, mm -hmm. what's my budget spend for that? Do we offer any guidance there? Yeah, it's a great question. We do have a software that we utilize. And since everyone's on the same chart of accounts, we can pull trend reports specific to your region specific to other peer groups across the network to really give you an idea of, okay, based on your area, here's what we're seeing in ranges. 
It's not going to get too specific because each market is a little bit different, uh, but we do provide, um, as Jen mentioned, not only references in the, for the FDD, but also kind of trend reports that we see through reporting software. Perfect. Okay. So this question came in um, also regarding resale opportunities. Is there a fee or costs for training and support for someone buying an existing business? Great question. So there is not any additional fees or uh, costs associated with the support you're going to receive after you sign your franchise agreement. So um, we always like to, to think that you're making the investment on the front end and we hope to exceed your expectations and help you continue to grow that existing business and have a healthy bottom line. Okay, perfect. And one thing that came to mind that is not a question that came in, but I wanted to make sure that I asked it. Um, one thing that I really love about Right at Home is um, our Right Focus dashboard. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, just describe that to our listeners and how our existing franchise owners um, use Right Focus and some of the things that are in Right Focus that are going to help them with their business. Sure. So Right Focus is really what we would consider the visualization of our business model. It's a dashboard. I equate it to the dashboard of your car. And so Within the Right Focus dashboard that's dedicated to your individual office, you're able to see the four key components of the business model supply. So the metrics are going to tell you how is your caregiver applicant pipeline? Is it, and it's going to benchmark based on your goal for the year and let you know, okay, am I in the red? Do I need to put some time, effort, and attention here? Or I'm in the green. Things are looking um, healthy from the amount of app applicants coming in. It's also going to show you your conversion rate. So how many are you actually taking from an applicant and hiring them uh, and, and granting them employment with right at home? That's really on the supply side. On demand, we think about all things driving demand. How do we generate more client inquiries and, and get more clients uh, that can serve the, or serve us through the mission? And so those are going to look at your client inquiries that are coming in, uh, sales conversions, uh, the middle section of your dashboard is going to entail our operational metrics. So your fixed expenses, variable expenses, uh, your revenue. So looking at on a weekly basis, how many hours are you servicing in comparison to, to your annual goal, the revenue. Uh, and then the last uh, kind of section um, is quality. So thinking about your client satisfaction, your caregiver satisfaction, um, and each of those are on one dashboard. So it's all the data is populated on your behalf. And then there's sub dashboards that you can go in to see, okay, if this metric's not looking the way I intended it to look, let me take a deeper dive at some of the sub metrics that could be contributing. And I think most importantly is obviously not only knowing, am I out of gas? Is my tire pressure low? But being able to do something about it. And so the dashboard also links to tools that you or your team could implement to hopefully increase that metric and get it back into alignment with where you're hoping to see. I love it. It's a one-stop shop, people. <laughs> to find all sorts of awesome information about your business. I just really love that about Right at Home that we have this tool that, you know, you, you go to one spot and you've got all yeah. this information about your business. You don't have to go to 50 different spots. Uh, but anyway, I have more questions for you, but we're going to ignore my questions and we're going to look at the questions that have come in while you are answering that question. Uh, first question, how much interaction do we have with our business performance coach and other franchise owners? Great question. So as far as your business performance coach, uh, we love to meet people where they're at. And so some weeks it might look like, hey, I'm talking to my business performance coach every day, every other day. And other times it might be like, you know what, we've got a solid plan here. I'm going to do a monthly check in with my coach and, and just kind of see, OK, what tools and resources should I be leveraging to hopefully uh, streamline my operations and make life for your staff and yourself easier? Um, so I would say on a minimum monthly, um, but again, we're going to meet you where you're at and we'll talk every day if you want to talk every day. Uh, as far as the franchisee community, you know, you we want to connect you with people that are in this alongside you each and every day. We want you to be able to learn from their experiences um, and to ideate and build neighboring re relations. And so there's multiple opportunities through state kind of Zoom calls, settings like this, uh, regional opportunities. You know, we do host in-person meetings. Um, and then we have performance groups and other opportunities where you can join um, kind of a smaller group of franchisees uh, to lean into from almost a mini board of directors. You know, hey, here's my PL, here's my income statement. 
here's the challenges my team is experiencing. Help, help me overcome these. And, and here's some bright ideas that I want to give others that is working really well in my business. Uh, we believe that, you know, we continue to get better every day by learning from the great franchisees we have in the system. And we want all of you to feel that same support and encouragement uh, through the franchise community. Okay. And you've just answered this question kind of sort of, I wanted to make sure that I actually asked the question, but I do believe that you've already answered it. Does Right Focus provide me comparative data to other franchisees my size? Great question. So your Right Focus dashboard will not um, have comparative data, but we have other reporting softwares um, such as our transparency reports where you can go in and see um, our top 25 percentile on the revenue side and ours as well as the top 25 client satisfaction and caregiver satisfaction offices and compare yourself there. Otherwise in ZYs, a separate reporting area, you're able to benchmark yourself around your region and peer group. So not go. in right focus, but other opportunities to do that. That's right. Okay. Um, this question, uh, well, th this question kind of pertains to something you've already said as well. Can I spend time with a local franchise business? Yes, you can spend time with local franchise business. You know, part of our onboarding plan, especially for a brand new owner that's buying a brand new territory, is we do have you shadow an existing um, franchisee in market. Sometimes it's hard to conceptualize and training and visualize all this that we actually want you to see an mm -hmm. office. Um, but we encourage franchisees to visit each other all the time, uh, get a different perspective on maybe how an operations is, office is running differently than yours. Um, but yes, you can do that at any time. Okay, perfect. Um, back to training. This person is asking, who gets this training? Is it just me or my staff? And remind me, was that question specific to Right Start training or just training in general? I think just training in general. Okay. So there's opportunities for your staff and you for training. So we have a training library through Home Care Pulse that your care teams, your office staff teams, and yourself can all uh, enroll in the curriculum. And then we do offer the Right Start training, obviously that the franchisee would be required, but we welcome any staff to come to that training in person here in Omaha. Um, we know that we can only continue to get better by offering more and more training. And so we're thinking even at Home Improvement, our annual meeting, how do we have training tracks dedicated to each role within the office? to continue to give them opportunities to continue to get better. And remind me, Emily, is it the franchise owner plus two office staff people that we allow to, that's covered under the standard uh, training. If you want to send more people, that would be an additional cost. Is that correct? I might need to follow up on that because uh, do you know the answer? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's answer? correct. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's outlined in the FDD for sure. You as the franchise owner, plus a couple of other people, if you want to send more people as the franchise owner, in addition to that, um, you will need to pay extra for that. But our, I just, I just wanted to point out there is general support for you and your office staff, but up to a certain point, you know, it's not you plus send 20 of your the office <laughs> staff. Um, there is a slight limit to that, but uh, support nonetheless for you and your office staff. Thank um, you. Okay. So what does support look like if I've been open for five years versus just one year? Is there a cost difference? These are super awesome questions. <laughs> they are. Such a great question. <laughs> uh, so there is not a cost difference, number one. Uh, but the support is going to look vastly different your first year versus your fifth year. And the reason being is uh, each year you're with the system, your goals are going to change and your office dynamics are going to change and your team size is going to change. And so... Uh, we have a strategic business plan template that, you know, our owners that have been in the system um, for five years, we're really helping them scale their operations. It's, uh, you know, the first couple of years is a lot of uh, firefighting, if you will, and, and it, that takes a different coaching um, mentality when you're in that uh, phase. Um, so, again, we always meet you where you're at in your business, and our coaching is going to change uh, to help you achieve your goals. Um, and so it looks different because I have some people that are in the system, you know, and hitting where some people in the system are at five, six years in and they're in year three. Uh, it's really just that go getter mentality. And, and we're here to, you know, exceed your goals that you put out for yourself. OK, uh, this 
This person is asking if basically if we're going to feed them when they come to <laughs> Omaha <laughs> for training. Please, please, please know that yes, when you're in <laughs> Omaha, we love taking you out to lunch. There's no better place than building relationships and some downtime over a meal. But yes, we will definitely make sure that lunch is provided. Okay, so maybe you have... <laughs> Maybe you have mentioned this, but when I just had somebody ask me this question this morning, I want to make sure that you, you touch on this a little bit. Well, we say training and we say, come to Omaha. What we're referring to the come to Omaha, that is one week that we call residence week. That is not one singular week of training. Like you come to Omaha on Monday, you leave on Friday, training complete. That is not the case. So residence week where you're here in Omaha is part of training. So what happens before residence week, uh, as far as training goes, and what does that look like, Emily? Yeah, so kind of going back to that right start onboarding schedule, there's mm -hmm. within each milestone, there's going to be training just in time, because we want to make sure that training isn't so overwhelming that you're not able to retain a lot of the information we're providing. And so there's going to be opportunities for right at home university training, where it's a um, training through an online platform. Yep. Uh, there's going to be training through uh, different recorded webinar opportunities. Um, but really training it starts from the day that you join the system all the way up until you're open for the, as Jen mentioned, that residency week, you're going to come to Omaha right before you open. And then after there's a plethora of training opportunities, um, but specific to right start, it's really part of the entire onboarding plan. Okay. Uh, this person is asking, can I come back to Omaha training, say, after 10 years? Things yes, change. we actually just put an article out in our weekly newsletter uh, last week inviting anyone to participate in the upcoming Right Start training. Um, again, that's not uh, just for new owners. We love seeing um, branch directors and uh, area managers and franchisees come back and, and uh, sharpen their skill set. Uh, there's always more to learn. Okay. Got it. Um, all right. So uh, I don't see any other live questions uh, that have come. In. Oh, okay. Yep. One just came in. What do you think makes a franchise owner successful? And I suppose I would kind of reword that as. Oh, I'll let you answer it first. And then, uh, <laughs> but let's see if you answer it in a way that I want yeah. you to answer it. <laughs> So uh, success can mean a lot of different things to, to different individuals. But when I think about thriving franchisees, I think about them being engaged in their franchise community. Um, they're, you know, in performance groups. They're part of the Strategic Leadership Council. Um, and they're engaged with their team and in their community. Uh, they're also coachable. Um, you know, like I said, we're not always going to have all the answers, but being even coach coachable by peers, um, I know that that helps franchisees thrive, um, being accountable. Um, so not only to um, us in partnership, but also to your team and being a leader each and every day. I always say uh, being a leader doesn't matter about position. Um, you can be a leader. And, and really the last thing I'd say about thriving franchisees is they're resourceful. There's always going to be a challenge, There's but there's always going to be an opportunity to overcome that challenge. And you just got to get creative. Um, you know, this caregiver recruitment uh, is going to continue to be a challenge for the system for many, many years to come. But we're going to keep getting creative and how we can overcome it together and think of new ideas. So uh, those are a couple of the traits that I would say thriving franchisees have within our system. Perfect. You did a, a bang up job answering <laughs> that question. No, <laughs> I, I approve. No, that was that was great. I just wanted to make sure that um, you had lots of things to offer. Um, but specifically for me. Um, uh, I would answer that question um, as more of a broad uh, general statement. Franchise owners who are incredibly engaged with mm -hmm. all of the, the tools and the resources, the guidance, the support. If you are an engaging franchise owner with your franchisor, with your community, with your caregivers, with your clients, if you are involved and engaging mm -hmm. and if you, you know, there's a lot of that back and forth. And if you are that type of franchise owner, to me, that's what really makes a, a franchise owner thrive, which would you mm -hmm. mentioned that. So thank you for that. This question, Perfect. we've got five minutes to spare. This question says, my dream is to pass a business on to my children. Can they come to training someday? Is it even possible to pass my business on to my kids? 
First of all, great dream. And yes, we can absolutely make that dream a reality. So we have, um, I bet about a half a dozen to a dozen franchisees that have already passed their businesses down to their kids. We love to call them legacy owners where we're seeing the legacy live on. They can come to training. Um, they would get the same support uh, that that franchisee had. Um, but yes, we want to continue to see more of that. Um, ultimately, that's the American dream, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, one question that I wrote down, I wanted to make sure to ask you uh, before we close up uh, things here. You've mentioned a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of things that we are going to do to help and support our franchise owners, mm -hmm. a lot of things that they can do to, to set their business up for success. But if you had to choose one piece of advice to give to a brand new franchise owner that's just starting their business, the number one thing that they need to focus on, if you just Chad, choose one thing, it can't be more than one, Emily, just one thing, what would that number one thing be? Follow the plan. The, the, this is a well-established brand, well-established business model. We have uh, great years of experience and have put a plan together to help franchisees launch successfully. Following the plan is going to help you do that uh, and not deviating too much from it uh, is going to, again, warrant that that fast takeoff. So that would be my one piece of advice. That's great. That's a great piece of advice. Another question just came in. What is the most rewarding part of this business? I would say delivering the mission each and every day is the most rewarding to improve the quality of life for those we serve to see that in action and see the impact you not only make on clients and their families, but these caregivers are unsung heroes and the work they do every day is beyond rewarding. Yes. And I can echo that um, of all the people that join the right at home system. Um, I'd have to do the research, but I would wager that the number one reason why people join the right at home system is because they want to, they want to do exactly that. They want to be a business owner of a business that is rewarding in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, su success with significance, we call it. Um, but yes, um, and if if that's what you're looking for in a business, then right at home is the right fit for you. So anyway, um, I can't believe it's almost uh, 30 minutes have gone by. Is there any closing thoughts that you want to uh, provide to our listeners? I think the last thing I would leave you with is we would be honored to have you join our Right at Home family. We hope that uh, we can be your partner and your success to delivering that mission to so, so, so many people that continue to need it around the world. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I second that. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> I always enjoy you, these conversations with you. And I know um, our um, prospects uh, who are listening, um, they enjoy these, um, these webinars that we do. Very uh, informative, very helpful. So Thank you for taking the time to do this. I appreciate it. And I know that they do as well. My pleasure. Thank you, okay. Jen. Have a great rest Have of your day. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Goodbye.